fine delta s of system plus delta s of surrounding now we'll say that if delta s of universe is greater than zero then the reaction is spontaneous otherwise it's not spontaneous now i have calculated delta s of universe as delta s of surrounding plus system delta s of system stands as it is because i have data for delta s of system i'll calculate delta s of system directly now delta s of surrounding i have written as delta h of system by t of surrounding now t of surrounding would be known and delta h of system is known because i can calculate all the quantities for system so delta h of the system will be known and t of surrounding would be known from this expression i can calculate delta s of universe now if i have to comment on the spontaneity of this reaction i have to look for delta s of surrounding and delta s of system delta s of system previously we have calculated from the data delta s of system will be delta s of product minus delta s of reactant the delta s of product will be given delta s of reactant would be given i can just subtract them using proper coefficients multiplying because they will be given per mole here are two moles of ammonia so you just have to multiply it by 2 similarly for hydrogen it will be given per mole you have to multiply it by 3 doing that i'll get delta s of system there's no problem and i have calculated delta s of system this was of system as minus 170 minus 177 Joule per Kelvin. Now I have to calculate delta S of surrounding. For that, I require delta H of system. Now delta H of system would be given in the problem, and uh, uh, delta H of system would be given. And in this problem, suppose I give you delta H of system to be to be what? Oh, suppose I give you some data. Delta H of uh, ammonia. Delta H of ammonia is given as minus forty five point nine kilojoule per mole. This information is provided to you, and there is no other information. Now, from this information, you have to calculate delta H of the system. That means delta H of for this particular reaction. for delta as we did for delta s the same approach would be cal will be for delta h now delta h of the system will be delta h of product minus delta h of reactant now for calculating delta h of product you have been given the data you will multiply it by 2 you will get the delta h of product for calculating delta h of reactant you have not been given any data so first you have to think why you haven't been given any data and still they are asking you to solve to solve it that means the data is not required and if you look at here then uh, previously it was told i'm um, just quickly again reminding you that delta h the enthalpy change of formation during formation of molecules which during formation of uh, molecules or uh, uh, state of an atom like nitrogen can be in atomic state nitrogen can be in molecular state so delta of formation for a particular state of an atom which is the natural state is zero nitrogen in nature exist as n2 gas so this is the natural state of nitrogen hydrogen in uh, nature exist as hydrogen gas so this is the natural state of hydrogen similarly ammonia has nitrogen and hydrogen now this is not the natural state of atom nitrogen and atom hydrogen the natural state is nitrogen gas and hydrogen gas but these are the natural states so the delta h enthalpy of formation for atoms in their natural state is zero this is taken by convention i mean there is no very logical basis for it but for convenience we take this to be zero okay like you don't have potential energy zero if you keep a block at the surface of the earth there are mass distribution of the earth and still there will be some finite amount of i mean a gravitational attraction of a block by the whole mass of the earth because the center of gravity if you consider is here and there is considerable distance between the center of gravity of uh, this block and the center of mass of the earth so there will be of course some amount of attraction and by masses which are far apart there will be considerable attraction 
by all the masses which are nearby and far by, there will be considerable attraction of this block from the mass which is inside the earth. But we still take potential energy to be zero on the surface for convenience. There is no, I mean, logical reason from physics. Physics doesn't tell you that the force of attraction will be zero. So, force of attraction is not zero. There is some potential energy, but we take potential energy to be zero as convention, to to make a base and start calculating from there. That's why here as well, you have been, you have taken the enthalpy of formation as zero from chemistry from thermodynamics you don't have a reason for this but by con for convention for simplicity to form a base and to start calculation from here we take it to be zero this explanation was given before to you in case you don't remember then I have explained you once again so delta H of reactant will be zero because delta H of N2 gas and H2 gas are zero so delta H of reaction is delta H of product minus reactant. Delta H of reactant is zero. So if you just multiply it by two, you will get delta H of product. Fine. So 91.8 kilojoule per mole will come out, will be the delta H of system. And that will be the delta H of product. Now from here, we can calculate the delta H of, uh, uh, delta H of system by temperature of surrounding. Temperature of surrounding has not been provided, so in that case, you will assume it to be 25 degrees Celsius. So you will take temperature of surrounding to be 298 Kelvin. And uh, delta S of system we have calculated before as joule per kelvin and these are in kilojoule per kelvin so multiply that i mean make bring that in same unit so bring that this also in joule per kelvin now this you will calculate as 101 joule per kelvin of course this is a positive number so delta s of universe is being calculated as positive Delta H of delta S of system was negative. So delta S of system is not of any concern. What we have to be bothering with is delta S of universe. Delta S of universe came out to be positive and it's a considerable positive number. That means this reaction is spontaneous. So I hope there is enough clarity on this that delta is the of delta S of universe is the real quantity that you should be looking forward. You will not give any answer based upon delta S of system or delta S of surrounding. Whether they are positive or negative will not decide whether the reaction is a spontaneous or not. Now reaction is a process. The process is not only this, that nitrogen and hydrogen are changing into ammonia. The whole process is heat is coming out of the surrounding. There's some changes happening in the surrounding as well. And there's some changes happening in the system because of this reaction. So that cumulative change if that is together bringing increase in entropy, then it can be spontaneous. If that is not bringing both the things together, if that's not bringing increase in entropy, then even though for this particular reaction, if you have increment in entropy, it may not be spontaneous. Okay. Okay. Now you have to know this expression. Delta S of universe is equal to minus delta H of system upon T of surrounding plus delta S of system because we are going to start with this expression now. But I hope this much is uh, clear that delta S of universe is a quantity you should look forward to in order to find out whether a process or a given reaction is a spontaneous. Now uh, we have been discussing that if delta S in a process is positive, then the reaction is spontaneous. Now, when there is an equilibrium, suppose A plus B is giving C plus D. Now, in, in junior classes, we were taught that during uh, this reaction, what happens is A plus B starts to give C plus D. And because the reaction is reversible, then C plus D as 
the reaction proceed and C plus D is formed in considerable amount, then C plus D also start reacting to give back A plus B. And a point comes at which the net amount of A plus B changing to give C plus D is equal to C plus D changing to give back A plus B. So the net amount of A plus B is not changing. And net amount of C plus D is not changing because the amount formed is equal to amount reacted. So concentration of A plus B and C plus D start to rem after some time remains constant. Even though the reaction hasn't stopped, but the net concentration is not changing because A plus B is continuously being reacting to give C plus D and is continuously being formed on reaction of C plus D. So as such, th there is no static equilibrium. As such, the atoms haven't stopped to react. But since the rate of forward and backward reaction is equal, so the net concentration is not changing. So if you ask about energy distribution, so whatever energy is in inside the system, they are distributed in constant number of A, B, C and D. The energy distribution is not changing. Fine. Because the number of atoms is not changing, so energy distribution can't change. Because energy distribution depends like on the number of atoms you have. 